For the break, we're talking about uh, disruptive products and uh, disruptive technology, which is changing the space uh, within the telco area. Convergence, of course, is the very next big step, especially when it comes to customer satisfaction. Angus, let's pick it up from where we left off a little earlier. When it comes to disruptive products, I mean, clearly it is about profitability down the line. How do you balance the two? How do you come up with that right yeah. number where you say, I'll offer you everything by this package? Yeah. I think just to, just to take an example more from the corporate space rather yeah. than from the, uh, the, the consumer space. Um, even in the corporate space, there's, there's value to be had because we know that uh, overall across the market, the prices are still relatively high for um, communications in South Africa. Broadband is still not at the prices that it could be if you look at uh, global benchmarks, and particularly the higher end services. So given that what we're talking about with convergence is the ability to do all of those things which you see happening around the world in the telecom space. So whether that be cloud computing, whether that be uh, virtualization of all of your IT services, whether that be um, the, uh, the convergence of all your voice, all your internet, all your data services onto, onto a single connection. Those are the things which we see happening around the world. The, the challenge is how do we add value to that? And the way that we see adding value is by using what we have at our disposal. So in the case of optical fiber, we have bandwidth. So we can trade off bandwidth, we can provide bandwidth connectivity and basically a, an amount of data uh, against the cost of the service. So we're able to deliver more for less. That's how we, how, that's how we make up the value. Okay, may I speak from personal experience? Purely because I've had a very bad experience when it comes to bandwidth, in internet speeds, various uh, service yeah. providers. The reality of the matter is that South African consumers are still not satisfied with what yeah. they're getting, no, especially to the home. I, yes, corporates yeah. and, and if you're a company, you get, uh, you get uh, the, the best technology. But unfortunately, yeah. consumers not feeling yeah. it. I think there's no doubt that for consumers, it, it is a challenge. And it's a challenge also for the providers because as, as a provider in the market, we still don't have access to the local loop of Telcom, which is the, the copper local loop. If we had access to that local loop, then we'd be able to compete directly on delivering uh, DSL type services or broadband uh, services directly into all the existing wired up homes. Uh, so what, we te what we're typically doing is, say, is rolling out fiber and delivering fiber services where we can. At this stage, we don't yet deliver fiber to the home. Uh, and it's going to take some time before uh, companies are able to build out that level of infrastructure. So there are still things that need to be done in the regulatory side that will get those benefits through to the individual consumer. Mm. Well, Chris, given the <laughs> fact that you are backed by a very strong player on a global level, and that, mm. of course, being Vodafone, Vodafone. Yeah. what kind of um, synergies have we seen and what kind of new products can we expect Vodafone to bring to the table where it will make the environment slightly better and more interesting, not only for the consumer, but also for the telco space as well and perhaps up everyone's game? So you spoke briefly about uh, the devices. Uh, we've spoken about bundling. And I think that if you look at the smartphone, one of the advantages of being part of a global family is that we can go out and procure massive volumes of phones. I spoke about the sub-1,000 Rand smartphone. This is a phone that can do all the functionality of a, an iPhone or a BlackBerry, but it's at a price point which people can afford. Not only do we do the phones, but we go into the home with the web box. And the web box now it gives you 3G coverage. Uh, you can put your device on top of your TV. You can now browse with the family. And so we bring connectivity, uh, both uh, from a data, from a mobile data point of view, to the phone as well as to the web box into the home itself. Mm -hmm. So a proliferation of new devices, uh, growth in terms of bundling, packaging. If people get bundles of data, for example, they're going to use them because they're bundled as part of the deal. And I think this has been probably one of the main contributors to the growth uh, of data in these device areas. Mm -hmm. And just to comment on that, yeah. I think the good news for South Africa is that many of the backbone connectivity, much of the backbone connectivity that we need, so that's the, the, the national optical fiber networks, yeah. I think everybody knows about the international submarine cable networks that have been deployed over the last couple of years. Much of that is right. So the ability to get the, um, the right amount of bandwidth, the right amount of connectivity out to the base stations uh, is, is, is rapidly um, growing in South Africa. And so even in a wireless network, even in, the, in, 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 in say, Vodacom's case, um, the other constraints, backbone bandwidth, connectivity, optical fiber, and so on, those are rapidly uh, being deployed in South Africa. And those are the things which will enable that last mile, in this case, a wireless last mile, to give the performance mm. that we, we like to see. Vitalis, I mean, are you optimistic about the future and hearing about some of the solutions that these gentlemen have uh, put on the table at this point? It sounds to me as if, uh, yes, we're expecting local loop and bundling, but that, of course, comes with its own set of challenges because if there's just too much traffic, we know what that eventually does for the end consumer. Where do you see things headed, uh, especially from a com competitive uh, scenario as well, because we've got a couple of companies that do have big players backing them? 
Uh, well, in, in terms of where the markets are heading in the future, first of all, um, just uh, taking a recap of uh, the, uh, the discussions we had earlier, uh, in, uh, we see IT services actually being the main disruptive technology to um, uh, traditional telco services. And that's why telco operators like um, um, Vodacom, Neotel, Telcom, and MTNs are actually moving into um, or embracing the IT space. So in the future, we actually expect to see um, more of that happening, whereby um, the traditional telcos will actually become key uh, providers of IT services, both for um, uh, I mean, the en enterprise uh, market and also the consumer market as well. So in terms of, for example, some players in the market or participants in the market having uh, strong backing from uh, international bodies, uh, we are actually going to see a lot of investments going into this space because uh, when it comes to IT services, it's no longer the domain of um, telco players alone. We have even uh, ISPs coming in and even smaller players have a share to play. So we'll actually see like a lot of competition getting tougher and tougher, especially as consumers will be looking for where they can get the best deal. Uh, some of the services they've been getting, say from ISPs, will now be available from uh, the traditional telco provider. And that's actually going to bring um, a mo uh, like the market to a better state of maturity where we expect prices to come down, where we expect uh, more, uh, in more enhanced services being provided yeah. to the users. But tell us who, who, which, which company at this point would you say is uh, making the most headway when it comes to convergence? Because they, it does seem that there is a race to converging and convergence to ensure that they do keep that market share. And at the end of the day, and I've alluded to this throughout the show, it is about maintaining the customer and maintaining customer loyalty. Well, uh, I mean, the, a number of companies, you can't, it's not easy to point out, um, say, a, say, a particular company, because um, I can mention, for example, uh, comfortably, say, about three or four companies uh, without uh, prejudice in case I skip a particular company. Uh, you can see even, um, say, players like uh, Internet Solutions uh, really pl uh, playing a key role, especially in the in enterprise segment when it comes to convergence, whereby, of course, uh, they, they bundle together voice over IP data services and other IT services into uh, the same uh, service that's provided to the enterprise user. Vodacom is also a key player. We know uh, Vodacom currently is playing um, both in the mobile space and also in the fixed space where, we, where for example, the uh, Vodacom already has um, fiber connectivity to some uh, like e enterprises. Uh, we know Neotel is also a key player. Uh, we cannot also uh, miss out um, on Telcom's role as well as MTN because all of them are playing in, uh, they're trying to play in a space where they didn't play before. Telcom having been a fixed provider, now it's moving into uh, the mobile space and uh, as well embracing the IT space. We know, I mean, Vodacom, MTN, yeah. they're also moving into the fixed line space using, uh, I mean, by rolling out uh, fiber to a really large extent. So we're going yeah. to see a lot of that happening in the future. Chris, uh, yeah. with regards, uh, we mentioned the, the disruptive space at this point. Where would you say you're headed when it comes to uncapped internet? Could that be a reality? We know MWeb came up with the very disruptive product. Are you uh, going in the same path, perhaps? And don't worry, I think you should think about the answer as well <laughs> there for you, Angus. I'm going to be asking you the same question. I think the future is very bright. So if we look at, in the last three years, data prices in Vodacom's case coming down from 40 rand a megabyte to less than 10 cents a megabyte, dramatic changes as we've had our input costs have dropped and as we've um, been able to connect to alternative providers of, of bandwidth so these prices have come down so in in this market it's all about competition and we drive each other down uh, for the consumer's best interest and ultimately um, i think data being such an important driver on a subscriber growth as well as from a revenue point of view we will have to remain competitive to ensure that we maintain our number one spot in so the South So I can African assume that you're alluding to the fact that Uncapped could be a reality for Vodacom customers down the line, right? <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> impossible in this space. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take the bait. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to, again, to, to, to you know, indicate where, where we have uh, um, the, the services, for example, on Fiber and on WiMAX, we, we have a couple of services in the business broadband space. So that's the sort of uh, your small to medium enterprises, your, your medium-sized businesses. Uh, we have a, a, a product range called Neo Broadband. There's a fiber version of that which is completely uncapped, completely unshaped, and gives you up to 15 megabits per second in both directions on fiber. 
We have a, a Wimax there a, I'm version. I'm sure of there's it. a big price tag on that, though. It's it's a business broadband service, so it's 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 priced in the same range uh, as as typical okay. business broadband or business DSL type services, but you're getting quite a lot more performance for mm -hmm. the same price, and. The, so that is certainly where we play, and, and that's obviously because that's where we physically rolled out our network is into, into business areas. Um, I think the, the other thing one also needs to look at is that if you look at the value that comes behind those services, there's a lot more value to it than simply the connectivity. I, I, I know it's, uh, you know, obviously one needs to look at what, what it means to be uncapped, what it means to have access to uncapped internet, but it, what also matters is what you get with that. So whether you're getting a voice service, whether you're getting a, a very well-priced voice service, uh, whether you're getting access to IT services, there was a mention of, of things like hosting services and uh, data centers. I mean, just connecting to our network, you, you, you can see vis you, you have visibility of a, of a global network behind that. And our global network through Tata Communications has got 100,000 square meters of, of data center hosting multiple providers, applications, all of the, the, the names you'll recognize on the internet are sitting hosted on that network delivering those services. So it's about are you getting access to those services and are you getting them at a, at a decent price. So exciting times afoot I would say. Yeah. Gentlemen, we have to wrap it up. Thank you very much for joining us today. Much appreciated.